Okay, then I think we are ready to start uh, this lecture. And uh, today I will uh, continue on uh, the topic on aggregate planning, uh, which is started two weeks ago. Uh, first, however, I will go through shortly the solution for assignment number one. I still have a few paper copies here. So those of you who have delivered paper copies can get them back. I think there are five or six copies here. So if you are here, so you can get them back. Otherwise, you can get them at my, uh, my office. Uh, I have uh, uploaded a possible solution on, uh, on uh, Fronter uh, two weeks ago. And I've also given you some uh, personal feedback to, to your solution. But first, I will go through, very short, the solution which is uploaded in, in Fronter. And uh, we remember the first two problems was to show by induction that these formulas are correct. And here you actually can um, see in um, uh, how the, the question is asked here, show by induction. So you can assume that this is actually correct. You are not supposed to check if it's correct, but you should show it. So both these two formulas uh, is correct and can be uh, formulated like this. First one, 2 plus 4 plus 6 and plus any number n multiplied by 2 in this series can be uh, shown, this sum can be shown by the formula n, the number of elements in the series, multiplied by n plus 1, the number of elements plus 1. And um, this is very similar to, to the particular uh, problem, which is also shown in uh, the uh, lecture note about uh, induction. Uh, but there, the sum was 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on, so not multiplied by 2. And the sum was then n. Uh, yeah, of course, this should be n plus 1. Uh, so, in, well, th this is wrong in, in, the, uh, in the solution, but it was correct in the, in the problem text. Uh, so here, the base case is to check what is, uh, is, is the solution correct if for, for the lowest possible value, when you put n equal to 1, have only one element in the sum here, and then 2 should be equal to 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1, which is 2 which is, of course, correct. And since you have proven the base case, or the initial case, we can assume that for any number k, this is actually correct. And then we have the series here, which is similar to the, um, to the hypothesis that uh, the sum up to a series here n for one particular uh, where n is a variable and k is a constant, so k is one particular number. For that particular number, this series is correct and can be uh, calculated to be the k number multiplied by k plus 1. And then, since we have proven the base case, we can try to solve this by induction. And by induction, we increase by 1, so we just add one extra number to the series. The series is the same up to 2k. And then we add the next number, which is 2 multiplied by k plus 1. So if k is equal to 6, then of course k plus 1 is 7. So then we have the series 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And this can now be uh, replaced by the, the formula n uh, or when n is equal to k plus 1, this will be k plus 1 and k plus 2. Just replacing the first part of the series here up to 2k with the formula we had in the assumption step and add the next number in the series, we will get this equation and just solve it for on both sides of the equation sign and find out that the right-hand side is equal to the left-hand side. k to the power of 2 plus 3k plus 2. So this is proven by induction to be a valid formula, if it was n multiplied by n plus 1 here, which was in the, in the problem text. 
Uh, same. Uh, it's for problem B. We have another formula, which now is 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus any number. It will continue by 10, 13, 16, and so on. Found by the expression 3n minus 2. And this sh we should now show that this is equal to n multiplied by 3n minus 1 divided by 2. The base case here is n equal to 1. Then we have only the first element here, 1. On the right hand side we have 1 multiplied by 3 multiplied by 1 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is of course 2. <coughs> 1 multiplied by 2 is also 2. So 2 divided by 2 is of course equal to 1. So the base case, the initial case here, is also correct. Then we assume that for any number k this formula is valid and we will check by induction what will happen if we increase this number by 1. We have the same series up to 3k minus 2, the same as in the assumption step. And then we add the new number. What is very important is to in, uh, well insert k plus 1 instead of n. So now we have 3, which was, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, here we have the, the formula 3n minus 2 and we sh when we should increase or in insert k plus 1 we have 3 multiplied by k plus 1 minus 2 and which is equal to n is equal to k plus 1 so k plus 1 multiplied by 3 k plus 1 and minus 1 divided by 2. The first part of the series is, as we saw in the previous example, uh, the, uh, equal to the formula found in the assumption step here. And uh, then we add the new element and we insert k plus 1 instead of n in the, uh, in the formula on the right hand side. And then we will uh, just try to multiply and uh, simplify this equation and check if the right hand side is equal to the left hand side, which also is the case here. 3 k to the power of 2 minus k plus 6 k should be 5 k and plus 2, which is the same on both sides. So now we have proven by induction that this formula is correct. Uh, also in problem B. Then we had a problem about regression analysis and we had some data for one particular year, 2002, which looks like this. And then we saw we had a, well, a great uh, increase in the sales in November and December and we should now try to create a model based on regression analysis and we remember that regression analysis will, will try to find a straight line which is best fitted to this uh, data point, which looks more or less like, like this. <coughs> so in A, use a simple linear regression model. Calculate the parameters A and B, which is used to uh, estimate the regression line and then use that model to predict the future sales values up to and including 2005. Uh, if we look at the solution, we can see like this. Here is the data we should uh, use, first year, 2002. Then we should calculate the values or the formulas here, the SXY and the SXX, because these formulas are, uh, or these values are used to find the gradient of the line, the B, the slope of the line, how much does it increase or eventually decrease from one period to the next. 
And when we have the gradient, we can also easily find the A value, which is the point where the regression line meets the Y axis. And this is formed by the average demand in the, um, in, in the years or, or the, the periods which is used for this, uh, uh, to create this model, and minus the line or the, the B value found, found here. Uh, as the, the gradient uh, to uh, multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2, which means that we will follow the line back to the, uh, the y-axis. Uh, so we will here, if we are looking at the first year here, we will find the average value d here, and we will continue back to the y-axis where we find the A value. And I have also created a spreadsheet in Excel, which is used to calculate these values. Here we have the, the formulas uh, or the cell references for the SXY and the SXX using the DI, the demand multiplied by the period number, and also uh, now the uh, this is, of course, the, the, the demand for period i, these, the values in these columns. And here is the i multiplied by the di, which is the period number multiplied by the demand. And these values are used to calculate the sxy and then also the sxx according to the formulas. Then we will find that the b value is 127,980.4. Which is the increase from one period to the next period. And then the A value is not very easy to see here, but it will be a negative value of minus 117,395.7. Using regression means that we should assume that this development for the first year, which we have now found, should also continue for the coming years. Which means a line that will continue to grow and grow and grow. But, as we can see, when we analyze and look at, the, uh, look at the actual demand for the next years, we can see that this is a product, the PlayStation, which is a typical Christmas gift. And this product will have very uh, clear seasonal differences with a peak season in November and December. And then you will, in January, go back to normal. So here we can see very clear that this is not a very good strategy to use when we have seasonal differences in, in the demand. <coughs> so this is also, uh, well, of course, it's m possible to, uh, to have a much uh, better analyze than I have actually uh, written here, because this is the, well, the major conclusion. But of course, you can also uh, answer this by looking uh, at, at the, uh, uh, analyzing the demand and the forecast much more thorough than I have actually done here. But this is obvious that this is a product with seasonal variations, and then a method for predicting seasonal series will be better. Because then we can also try to, uh, to take into consideration these seasonal differences and the peak um, periods in, in November and December. So, this solution in, uh, as a PDF uh, file and also the spreadsheet, which does the exact calculations to find the regression line, is uh, uploaded in Fronter, so you can study it if you, well, if you have trouble understanding. And of course, if you have any questions, you can just contact me either on my office or send me an email. <coughs> Let's try to resume a bit from two weeks ago, where we looked at uh, the topic in chapter three called the aggregate planning. And we can start here, I think, with the aggregate units. And then the aggregate units is uh, which types of units we are 
using, for example, in a forecasting situation. And there we can have lots of different units. We should use the units, which is quite natural in the particular uh, market or product we are trying to, um, uh, to make uh, plans for. Uh, actual units is, of course, a very easy one. Just count the number of units if you're producing the same unit with no differences. Um, are you producing steel, for example? Then weight is a natural unit. You are looking at tons or eventual kilograms or any other weight in uh, other ty uh, similar types of, of products. Um, for gasoline or liquids, volume is a quite natural unit. Gallons, liters, deciliters, or any other volume. Um, dollars is also, or uh, kroner, uh, any other currency. The value of the sales is a unit which can be used. And sometimes we should try to create some fictional aggregate units to be used in forecasting and planning because these fictionous units might be uh, a better way to, uh, to make forecasts and, and plans than to try to divide into different type of, uh, uh, of variants of the product. And we saw one example on such an aggregate unit uh, on this example with the washing machine. We have six different models of washing machines. They have, they are different, uh, well, uh, they have a different price, different number of uh, working hours to produce, so the well, most expensive types are probably a bit more uh, uh, advanced than the cheaper models. And also we have different percentage of sales on the different models here. So the cheapest models uh, with uh, the lowest price is also the simplest one for the number uh, when you see to the number of working hours to produce and also uh, this one will take the highest percentage of the sales and then the percentage will decrease according to the price and the uh, well, how advanced these washing machines are so the question here how do we define an aggregate unit and the answer or one possible answer will be to look at the percentage and the number of working hours. So here, to create forecast for washing machines, independent of types, we multiply 32% by 4.2, which is the number of working hours for that particular <coughs> uh, model. And 32% multiplied by 4.2, 21% multiplied by 4.9, 17% by 5.1, and so on. And then we will have uh, created a fictionous uh, unit for washing machines, which can be used in forecasting and planning. Uh, the reason for using such fictionous units is that, well, uh, for washing machines, they, will, uh, they, they are differing in uh, different components, but many of the components are probably similar. And it's also much easier to create a forecast based on how many washing machines will you sell in the next periods, than if you should try to create a forecast for washing machines of type 1, type 2, type 3, and so on. So the forecast will usually be more accurate if you try to forecast on a higher level, on the aggregate uh, number of washing machines, how many washing machines will you sell, instead of trying to forecast all different types and add, the, add those together. Because the uncertainty will be much higher in the, in the last, uh, 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 last example. So here, this is a way to define an aggregate unit for a product which have different models use, for example here, the working hours, number of working hours to produce each machine, and multiply by the percentage, the percentage of the total sales. So, we assumed that we had one 
uh, or that we were using this aggregate uh, example for washing machines. And then we had a forecast for eight months from January to August, shown here. And you also had some starting inventory at the end of December, which was 200. And you also have some policy that you should have 100 units on hand at the end of August.